Hey guys, so I've put together a video before kind of talking about this um, little Python thing I've done and it wasn't all the way finished and now I've gotten pretty much all the way there at least within Jupyter Notebooks to be able to do this. Um, so to kind of kick it off if you haven't seen the, those before, this uh, first bit is uh, all in Markdown. So if I actually click on this little cell, you'll see up here it'll switch to Markdown. Markdown is is kind of like a uh, like a some type of website blog type um, uh, language. I, I guess you could say um, that just gives you some tools to to um, create links in there and and to make things kind of look nice. Uh, if I actually click into this, this is what it looks like natively without uh, being converted. Um, you can see if you add the these before um, before the text, it, it'll it changes the size and stuff. So if I add another one, um, it'll kind of give me a preview of what it looks like. To create the links, um, you put in the text beforehand, and then you put in the uh, links afterwards, and that's what um, it, it makes. Um, you know, uh, it gives you these links that you can actually click on to to take you to the websites. So to give you to just break this down because I, I ultimately want to share these notebooks so that anybody can get in there and start doing whatever it is that they want to do with it if they want to change it or if they want to totally um, recreate uh, what it what it was um, they can go ahead and do that and what I've done is I I, I kind of have a, I start with a template uh, notebook that I then um, kind of while I'm working through the problem I'll start adding um, links or I'll go out there and you know search different links and then I'll just what I'll do is I'll I'll save them but what what I find is really helpful if, if I, I add the specific link that I used for this notebook I'll add it to the actual notebook so that I can reference it at any time and that also helps people that are trying to learn what the heck's going on here so you know I've got common resources which is Stack Overflow and Python 3 documentation Python 3 documentation is just a the doc uh, documentation on Python 3 um, so that will be everything that Python can do um, and Stack Overflow is kind of like a uh, I more or less use it I, I guess it's more like um, Autodesk forms and stuff like that you know you go to and you ask questions and stuff but there's a lot of other things uh, with it as well so there's that and then some Python links that I use throughout this script um, some general resources so Matterport statistics Chrome driver that that needs to be used um, for this script YouTube videos if, if I find some that apply this is just markdown li links um, if you want I don't just use markdown here I also use markdown later throughout the script to kind of help def um, more or less describe what's going on keep everything orderly um, also some generic code so generally what I do is I'll look something up I find that okay this may f help me with my issue um, if it doesn't then what I and I don't use it in the um, actual code I like to just save it up here in the markdown and just say hey you know um, almost keep a reminder as you know here's some some uh, relevant or, or maybe useful code that I can save for um, for a later time and then um, I have some generic notes these are just notes um, specific to uh, this um, bit of code um, or all this code this program I guess um, and this disclaimer is actually for me just to um, remind me that because ultimately in notebook what I find is that in Jupyter Notebook it's really useful to throw all your code in there and just test it out because you can run individual cells and then you can test it out see if it all works and then ultimately when you bring it into like a spider IDE and actually build a application or an exe I find that you have to do a lot of different things to make that code useful so I've done that with this at least got it working most of the way um, but in Jupyter Notebook it works all the way this disclaimer is just to let you know that if you want to build something that is automated um, you may have to change a few things uh, because in notebooks it's not I can't find a way to automate them um, 
you know, to for because this this specific program needs to be automated at a weekly kind of basis. So just keep that in mind when you're using these. Um, that when you do build them into some type of application, that they may need to be changed a bit. So the first bit here, um, okay, to, to kind of briefly talk about what it is that this does, it's essentially a automated process for going to Matterport's website, going to to their statistics um, portion of their site, and then pressing the download button. Because if I want a lifetime statistic, um, I actually have or a lifetime. They have a weekly, and uh, there's another option as well. You can go out. You have to go out there, download this CSV file that gives you all the statistics for the usage, you know, with your company. So you know how many times somebody gets on on the site and actually looks at the models and stuff. And I want to be able to pull that down at a weekly basis and then use it in a Power BI platform so that we can visually see, you know, what's going on and connectivity with a variety of different softwares as well. Um, and we didn't want to manually go out to that site every single time. So what we did was we set it up to get in there and um, open the site, press the download button, uh, go to the Gmail because it actually sends a email of the download CSV. So that's kind of annoying, but you go to Gmail, go in there, um, then download the um, uh, CSV file then move the CSV file from your downloads folder to another folder so this may not be the best way to do this um, you know there may be ways to change the directory of where it downloads or or do this in a more efficient way but I find that it's really fun and and, and pretty useful at least for for the time being so this first bit um, of code here it it just it essentially just archives that um, um, the latest um, CSV file that's in there so ultimately there should be a CSV file already there when we run this program and that's an you know the initial CSV file so what I'll do is I'll just archive it um, with this button or with this cell and you can see here the path or the file that I'm moving it to is right here so archive it just a generic path in, to an archive folder um, and then down here, I haven't found a good way to do this, but after I start messing with these paths and stuff, it changes the directory of this notebook. So I change it back by just running this command. So path, whatever this is, OS dot this path, and then we can change the path. And we can take a look at that by typing out path here. And we can see that we've updated the path um, to the correct location that I want it to, to kind of start at. Because this Chrome driver here, which uh, I have a link up at the top in the markdown code, the Chrome driver um, is actually located here, and that's where it opens from, is wherever that directory is. Um, so to kind of start it out, um, I can run it um, from here um, individually, which is going to run each um, thing. So to start it out, I would run this, which would open Chrome, then this to push in my, uh, or to grab the elements within that website. So the username, password to essentially log into the site. Um, and then so on with the rest of this, this is just selecting certain buttons to, you know, down here, login button, click down here is just export data for seven days, 30 days, lifetime. I want lifetime. So I, I put that down here. And then I say click, so it clicks on that button, and then it, it, essentially I, I, I then export that data, and then I close the driver, which just closes that Chrome window. And then down here, since it sends me an email, I have to do kind of the same thing what we did up here. So I, I open that email, I then um, um, push in my passwords and stuff, and then I uh, click all the correct buttons, you know, um, and then I come down here and since I haven't found a good way to do this I actually have to search so what I do is I, I created this object here and I say you know driver dot find element by name and um, that finds that search box up at the top and then I then send the search information so Matterport and then I click the button so essentially I'm you know just like anything else I go into Google go up at the top and I just search for a specific email called Matterport. And, and the cool thing with the email is it, it puts the newest stuff on top. So that latest email I should get 
um, up on, up on uh, top. And then the next bit is actually selecting that, that first element and that's here the X path is this and to get an X path it's really easy um, and a lot of this sounds confusing but if you actually go into the um, uh, um, different um, tools that I'm using or the different uh, libraries this is the library I'm using it explains all of that super easy you know all this is is it's looking at the websites HTML so, for example, um, we were looking at the, um, what was it, the uh, path for that email, or that, the, yeah, the email. We, all I do is I go in there and I select on that first item and I can just right click it and inspect. And usually what I have to do is like do it again and then inspect, inspect which will drill down to that specific element you can come over here and then right click and just copy the X path I find though like anything that's kind of the more or less unstable way of doing it because um, that path could change and stuff for now it seems to be the same every time and I haven't ran into any issues but you may run into some problems with that I have in other areas of the code um, and that's where like X path might not work but you know if because this is element by X path but you, it may work if you find element by name, um, which essentially is uh, a named element called password in the HTML code. Um, generally, you know, you don't have to actually read all this to find that information. If you have a specific object, like a button, you can right click inspect and then you can find like, it'll say name something, whatever. And then you can use that to essentially find that item and then do whatever you want with it. Um, so if I keep going down this, uh, I eventually click on the button down here. And then if we move down into um, this portion of it, um, to kind of recap it, we, we went to the Matterport site, we downloaded it, we got the, or we got the email that we can then download the CSV, and then um, it's now been placed in our downloads folder. So now we have to move it. Um, so to do that, we actually get the path, and then we um, eventually, after doing some um, stuff, we then move that file into the correct location, which we do down here. Um, I did find that I had to remove uh, the name at the end of it because originally it, it, it comes out like this with the actual date. And I didn't want that uh, because I don't care about the date. And if I have a Power BI you know, workspace, viewing a specific file you know called metrics lifetime then if, if the date changes every time then i'll have to repath that each time so down here i actually change that the name um to something else um let's see yeah right here so i can i can actually it's kind of confusing because sometimes it doesn't work but down here i can move the path but i can ch by because I essentially am calling um, this um, this file up here, and I can actually change uh, the the name of that file by just changing the extension here. So essentially, this extension had the date on it, so you can see here, and I just remove that date here, so that when it passes that file, it actually saves it um, with the correct name, which is you know having no date, and then um, overwriting that file if it's there. Um, so to see this in action, um, you know, because I think visually that it'll make more sense if we see it actually happen. Um, I, if you noticed before, I kind of removed my passwords and emails from this. So I've got it open in another, another window. So I'll, I'll run it cell by cell so that you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. So I'll minimize everything so that we can actually take a look at it. And then over here which is now on my screen, I'll start to run the commands so that we can actually see it. We can see that it's open Chrome. We're now in the Matterport. We'll push the uh, um, passwords in. And then now we're on this um, site 
and then what we'll do is we'll just collect we'll, we'll sl since it's already set to lifetime I can get it to where it actually selects um, either of these buttons lifetime 30 days seven days but it's already set to lifetime so I don't have to worry about that um, and I actually have the code to where it actually presses on that again um, just in case and after that we can run run the export and we can see it's ran it and now we're going to close the driver move to gmail and it opens gmail we can push in our um, passwords and stuff we can see Matterport's emails up there we can search it then we can grab that element as you see here and then we gotta click the downloads button so we'll click that and then we'll click download yeah. okay and then we say driver close and then we gotta move the file so I'm gonna go ahead and open up that folder so the downloads folder and we can take a look at kinda what's going on there um, so downloads and we can see we've got all this stuff in here which is kind of in the way all right stuff's deleted so we can kind of just see the model that we are the uh, file that we care about so with that one there, um, we can see it move. So I'll open up the file location where we want to push it to. So um, so we want to essentially push it here. Um, we can see one's already there. If we scroll over, we can see the date on it. Um, and we're just going to delete this so that we can actually see it move over. Um, and I'll go ahead and do that now. So. All right. There you go. So it moves it over and we're uh, good to go to use it if we have um, Power BI or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, view the file and not have to worry about um, going out to that site, manually downloading it, waiting for the email, then taking the email and pushing it to, um, or repathing it to, to Power BI because the name's different. Um, you know, moving the, the file around. We essentially, you know, can void out all that stuff and just focus on our Power BI dashboard and, you know, visualize what the heck's going on with our software and stuff and not worry about any of that tedious, redundant stuff. Um, and then ultimately, I have another bit up here that moves, I think, that file to a different location, but um, um, I don't think I have it working yet. The issue that I'm kind of running into is um, overwriting files. I haven't figured out how to do that. I'm sure it's pretty easy. I just keep running into problems where if a file's already there, it you know um, has an issue with overwriting it. Uh, I'm sure if I delete this file here, that it'll actually um, run the bit of code and move the metrics file. Yeah, so it moves it, but I keep running into problems with overwriting files so if anybody knows about that let me know because it's been kind of annoying um, so yeah hopefully this helps you guys in automating some tedious redundant tasks like I said a lot of this stuff isn't that hard if you want to know exactly where I got all this info from um, just check out the uh, uh, selenium um, site it has a lot of useful information i think i posted yeah here it is essentially everything i built um 
came from this library they have quite a bit in here so it's a definite uh, recommendation if you if you want to be doing stuff like this automating you know tedious tasks some other ideas that uh, you guys um, could maybe build upon or, or do is the um, you know uploading things to FTP sites uh, downloading things um, you know anything anything that re really you have to interact with websites to do um, the capabilities are there uh, with these libraries and Python uh, it, it's pretty easy so hopefully this helped you and gave you some ideas on things to do I'd love to hear what you guys been working on um, let me know and um, Again, I'll share this notebook with you. I just need to clean it up a little bit, and then you guys can do whatever you want with it. Um, I'll share a link with all my notebooks. I've been trying to throw them in there. Um, they're they're sh just shareable notebooks that I've been working on. Take them, do whatever you want. Let me, you know, if if you if you like, let me know what you've been doing with them. I'd love to hear. So thanks a lot. Um, let me know um, if this helped. Uh, like, share, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks.